All right, well, then that's what we're going to do. You just jumped right on. You don't even, do you, do you want me to intro you or are you just, Please. yeah, no, this guy's name is Carl Voss and he's the CEO of Soft Robotics. Yeah, Absolutely. Colin, okay, so I'm going to kind of just chill over here on this. No, you got to come over you here. You want me over here. Yeah, you're part of the demo. Oh. All right, so let's, uh, we'll show some cool stuff, but first let's talk about it because that's what we've heard a lot today is what's, you know, what's the, the why? Why does this exist? Or as Josh Wolf so eloquently put it this morning, what sucks? And so there's a couple things about robotics that, that suck that we want to talk about for a minute. One is, if you look at our guy right here, he's got these nice metal claws. So he's not really good helping you in different situations, right? He's good welding cars, he's good sanding things, but if you ask him to package shampoo, he's not going to do it very well. If you ask robots to do things that are adaptable, so a lot of us want to talk about in-home robots, elder care robots. Think about every time I open my dishwasher, you know, this is an, almost an unsolvable problem for a robot today, is how do I handle wine glasses, how do I handle dishes, all of that. And so there's a, a big part of it, and this is back to the things that are hard in robotics. Um, we, robots, it's, it's three basic things, right? We see something, then we have to plan a path, for all you that are working on path planning out there, and then we have to figure out how to grab it. And grass planting is one of those things that sucks. It's really hard, it's laborious, it takes a lot of computers. So we looked at a material science that came out of Harvard a couple years ago and said, this thing just grabs anything. It doesn't have to think about it. And so if you displace all of that grass planting and the manipulation with material science, you don't do it with any sensors, you don't have to require any numerical computation, you found out you can build a robot hand that doesn't suck to quote you know, Joshua from this morning, that can pick up all these things. And that's important because really where industrial robots are today, Jordan, is they're making cars, they're making airplanes, and they're not doing much else. Because if you think about where we have high variation, e-commerce, packaging, food, where do we have labor shortages, e-commerce, packaging, and food, is we need robots that can grab these things. And so that's what we do with soft robotics. So, Wait, can I just pause real yeah, quick? What you do. just said is that these things, based on just the material they're made of, absolutely, can pick up anything without worrying about how too hard they're, they're grabbing it exactly. or what they're grabbing. Okay, got it. So, so this is our setup. So this is our control system that we built at Soft Robotics that allows um, elastomeric materials, pieces of rubber that are really smart, composites of different materials, uh, talk to any robot system in the world. It's really the translator, and it allows these things to move very, sat, very fast and very precise. So I'll give you the quick demo. This is our, our little two-finger gripper here. Are you going to pick me up? Um, no, but what I'm going to ask you to do is shake hands with it. So there you go. <laughs> okay, now you can yeah. feel it. Now, change, now make a fist. Just change, make a crazy shape. Is it fist bump? Or? And it, yeah, it's going to fist bump. It's going gonna, it's gonna to make any shape without any sensors within any calculation, right? <laughs> no, about that. You it just works, yeah. right? You it saw does. It does. It worked. <laughs> it worked. I don't know if I feel better about myself, but it worked. You will. So let's, uh, let's roll a quick video here, and I'll talk you through it, um, through something that's really fun. So first video, please. So this is something that uh, we like to call blind object picking is we use apples because as you heard earlier this morning, apples are a tough object, right? They're different shape, they're different size, they're easily damaged. And you can see this is a Navy V industrial robot running at speed. It's using a simple black and white camera, 2D vision, and it just picks up apples. So we did this demonstration for a group of executives from a large industrial company and they said, that's neat, you programmed the robot for apples. How long did it take? Well, as you just saw that, that Jordan helped me with, is you don't need to program the system. So we then had our uh, scientists, an MIT graduate, by the way, uh, go to CVS, and we said, just buy a bunch of junk. So now the robot has no idea what it's looking at, and it doesn't care. So we're just putting a bunch of random objects, and so I think this is a, a pillow, a fake croissant, some tools, a five-hour energy, some pneumatic components, this is a box of bandages, some stuffed animals. And the robot's able to pick these up very fast, with precision, place them without any damage. And so this is really the breakthrough. And so now what it allows you to do is bring robotics into these industries that have been closed off. So you think about food packaging, where, as we said, every apple, every tomato, every piece of broccoli is a different size, shape, and weight. Now we can handle them with robots, and we don't have to do all that programming. Now we can have in-home robots that don't have to worry about a wine glass versus a coffee mug, as they can just pick them up. Two questions. Yes. Eggs. Oh, we do eggs all no, day long. No, that felt very, that felt too strong for an egg. It, it, eggs work really well. There's a great video that just went up on our website yesterday doing uh, high-speed moving of eggs. 
They're real eggs. We crack one at the end to, to prove it. So, um, yep, we love eggs. So eggs work. Okay, and second question, what was that company that you were talking to, that big industrial company? Um, very large industrial company. You don't want to talk about it? No. I had all. to try. Okay. They're very interested in robotics. So now I want to do one last demo, which is this is a literally a bag of rocks that is sold by a large e-commerce company. You can see. Pretty heavy, right? Indeed. You want to throw it on the table? And this is uh, our our handy dandy bakery gripper. And you can see it's just gonna pick these up and hold them, right? Without any thinking, you think about the most impossible object to pick up is that. So where it gets really interesting is now instead of thinking about how do we start from the robot and work to the gripper, let's start with what the gripper can do and work backwards. And so we started to really start, instead of saying how do we see, how do we path plan, how do we grasp, is if we know how to grasp with the low information, which we've just demonstrated, now we can build some really interesting human-robot collaboration to solve some really hard problems. So if you go ahead and roll the next tape. So the big problem here is 3D, right? Robots work very well in 2D. So this is a system that uh, Mike Rosenstein and Jim Allard, who are here in the audience, is these are completely unstructured environments that we're using 2D vision with a human in the loop teaching it. It's remote, so this human could be anywhere in the world. And you can see there's these very complex items, the spiky ball here. Um, I don't know what it's going to pick up next. It's going to pick up this one. Is really the gripper is doing all the work. So if you think about traditional grasping technologies, is I have to know the object. You heard Ty Brady talk about the Amazon picking challenge where they have to train this object thousands and thousands of times. We don't do any of that. There, here you can see, I believe this is Mike in the, uh, the picture teaching the robot, but this is another really hard problem for machine vision and grasping. This is a meal kitting application, bags of prepared carrots. They're all the same color, they're in clear plastic. There's no machine vision system out there today that's gonna be able to pick this. There is a gripper that can pick it, so we have the gripper that can handle these objects that are completely random, so let's have a remote person. They don't have to be in the refrigerated warehouse doing this, they can oh, be so remote. So a person is telling it which one to pick up next. Absolutely, okay. and teaching it along the way. So then that allows us to do really fun things. So why not pick tomatoes off the vine? So we, we talk a lot about harvesting, and so here's one where, um, once again, using the same system, tomatoes on the vine, you hang them up, and once again, there's no programming the gripper here. The gripper isn't sensing force. It's merely being told, there's a tomato that I want to pick, go get it. So instead of having hundreds of people out in the field, you can have these people in a nice air-conditioned call center with an autonomous system roaming the field, picking the ripe tomatoes. What, is, what kind of training do you need to be able to run a system like this? For all the people who are out in the, in the fields picking stuff, are they going to be the ones who get to go into this air-conditioned room and train your robot, or are those going to be other people? They would be the perfect ones to do it because they know what ripeness looks like. So they know when to pick a strawberry. So we really think that you're probably looking at less than an hour of training to run this system. It's that intuitive because you don't know, have, have to know anything about gripping. It's all solved. You don't know, have, to, have to know about path planning. All that's handled through material science. Very cool. Awesome. So you we have more stuff to show us? Well, we got lots of stuff to show you. So what, we, we what's brought the a bunch cost of, of these things? Like a, a gripper, like if I already have a robot, so and that's I just a, need some grippers. So that's a great question, Which is Jordan. a problem I wake up with every Monday. Yeah, you've got a robot. It only does one thing. You want to teach it to do something different. So we have a customer in Spain right now. Um, they're handling um, chocolate pastries. They're going to move their line to croissants later this year. And so they've been holding off bringing in the robots because he said, there's no way we're going to build a robot line to run a product we're going to change out in six months. They saw us and they're like, oh my God, I can automate my chocolate pastries today and then when we would change out without doing any reprogramming, we can package croissants, boom, that, that deal's done. We hope to ship that line um, in the near future. So that's a big part of it. The other thing I should have mentioned is this can all be made out of medical grade technology. So in a food environment, it's washed down. It's, uh, we can build with sanitary design. But if you think about it, you feel something like that. That's something that a robot's not gonna struggle with today. Yeah, throw it on out to the audience. You, wanna, you wanna play catch? Yeah, you guys didn't think I would be good at throwing, did you? <laughs> Change oh, stereotypes, left and right. Well okay. Done. So, you want to give it a go? You want yeah, to sure. I'll, I'll be in charge. So, what do you want to pick up? You want to pick up the bag of rocks? No. I okay. want to pick up the ball. Okay. There you go. Nailed it. That's all you had to do. There's nothing, <laughs> nothing there other than be able to look, see, and pick something up. So, the other thing is, do you know the center of mass of this object? The right in yeah. the middle. Neither do I. I. I had somebody tell me recently that the center of you, 
soft robotics could never work because you have to know the center of mass to pick up something. You want to prove them wrong? There you go. It's just that difficult. Like I said, <laughs> right in the middle. Wow, this is super... Oh, wait, so again, we did talk... Uh, you, you said that you are working with customers in Spain, but what is the business model for so the, this, and, and what does it cost? Like, if there are a bunch so, of people out here who build robots, I'm absolutely. sure they want a good gripper. So that, that's a great point. So this is a fully industrialized system. This system's designed to run up to four cycles per second... Uh, per minute. Yeah, per second, I'm sorry. So about 130 cycles per minute. So high-speed industrial robotics. So it does price, you know, in a premium range to other robotic grippers. Um, we do have systems for collaborative robots. Mobile robots is something exciting. And then as you think about as we, um, we get into the home and we help you with the dishwasher or turning the remote or bringing you a cold beverage, all those require adaptive gripping, and that's something we could do. So they all, they're all different economics, different price points based on the use case. I mean, you're very gracefully avoiding saying numbers up here, <laughs> and I appreciate that. I said, so... Um, People come to us who have unsolvable problems, and we solve them. And so we we, we are no, we are it. a premium price product. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay. So do, are we good? Do we get? We are, we're actually so out, of time, out of time. I just realized. So do you guys feel good about this? <laughs> yeah. They do. High five. High five. Okay. So I have to find my cards. Another round of applause for Carl. Mm -hmm. Really good Thanks. stuff. Oh, there's your card. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you.